He's always entertaining and informative, and we're so glad to have him here. Please help me welcome Gary Vaynerchuk. You don't want this, do you? Hey. So, first and foremost, oh, should I just do this for you? First and foremost, I really want to um, thank everybody. I mean, this is outrageously humbling. Every single person in this room, since you're here, there's no doubt in my mind that you are going to kill it. And that's what I want to talk about today. PP. I really want to talk about this. Patience and passion. Let's start with passion. There is way too many people in this room right now that are doing stuff they hate. Please stop doing that. There is no reason in 2008 to do shit you hate. None. Promise me you won't. Because you can lose just as much money being happy as hell. (laughs) Clap that up because it's real shit. You know, I I took over my family business. It was doing a couple million dollars a year and over a seven year period, I built it up to a $50 million company, turned 30, freaked out and decided I wanted to do something else. Get on my face. And so, (laughs) I saw, you know, Zay Frank and Amanda Khan at Rocket Boom doing all that stuff. I'm like, I can do that shit. And so that's what I decided I want to do. I became 1% not happy selling wine. One. And that's when I changed my life. I started Wine Library TV in February, I had to do the holiday thing and all that, but, and, and that's where this all started. And by the way, talking about patience, everyone's like, oh Gary, this is so great, but you, you're so handsome and charismatic, I can't do that shit, you know? <laughs> and I was like, listen, 17 months, I don't know if you know this, 17 months, you saw Fred say 2006, you just heard about me yesterday. 17 months, I did Wine Library TV, five days a week. I walked away from being CEO of my company, running that stuff, watching it dip. For seven years it grew 24% every month against the month from the year before. And I walked away, started Wine Library TV, and I became part of the community. Let's talk about community. Listen to your users like Fried said, absolutely. But giving a shit about your users is way better. People listen but they don't do anything. Doing something, answering those emails, giving a crap, caring about your user base, that's what you need to do. You need to care about everything and it starts with yourself. Look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, what do I want to do every day for the rest of my life? Do that. I promise you can monetize that shit. If you love ALF, do an ALF blog. You collect Smurfs, Smurf it up. Whatever you need to do, do it. So many people are talking about, I can't monetize, I can't monetize. There's a billion 70 year old douchebags that are in control right now. But the number two person, that 34 year old lady, she's gonna buy your shit. She's gonna put the the advertising on your stuff. It's coming. Stop crying and just keep hustling. Hustle is the most important word ever. And that's what you need to do. You need to work so hard. Guys, we're building businesses here. This isn't about parties. We're building businesses. I used to work in a liquor store from seven in the morning to 10 at night for seven straight years and the only days off I took were to watch the New York Jets. And you know what that did? It made me throw up on myself. So that wasn't a vacation. (laughs) And that gave me a platform. That was a stepping stone. The reason I was able to start Wine Library TV was because I built up this business. It gave me the equity, the cash flow to do it. You need to hustle. You have to have a, you have to have a business model. I mean, getting a crap load of users and then flipping it is not a business model. Make some cash along the way. Thank you for clapping. Make some cash along the way. You know, Fred and I, Fred Wilson, who spoke earlier, he was pretty solid, but a little boring. But, you know, we had coffee the other day and I was like trying to be cool. I'm like, Fred, I'm so about freemium, a word my brother AJ loves. You know, freemium, right? Have a free, you know, free platform, but have something to pay for. And Fred looks at me and goes, I coined that phrase. I just wanted to say that because he's so cool. <laughs> I want you to think about something. I did a video on this on GaryVaynerchuk.com. I always say, legacy is greater than currency. Has everybody completely grasped that your great, great, great grandchildren are gonna watch and see everything you've ever done? I think about that every single day. I want my grandkids to be proud of me. My mom did such a good job raising me. You know what I hustle about? 
I hustle about meeting every single person on earth. Do you know why? Because most people who don't really know me think I'm a loud, obnoxious East Coast guy. Why is this guy here? He's a wine guy, he's a dick. <laughs> but when they meet me, they, they can see that I care. I got lucky, my DNA is weird. I care about people more than I care about myself. You know, my gift is my curse kind of thing and that's helped me quite a bit. Because listen, it is not fun answering what wine goes with fish 74 times a day. <laughs> it's not. I produce the most non-scalable apps on earth. When Facebook launched apps, I was like, what should we do? You know what? We'll do a Facebook app called Ask Gary. You ask me a wine question, and I answer it. That was eight hours a day for a month. That sucked. And even worse, I would let nobody answer them except me. I answer every one of my emails, 700 to 1,000 a day. This is why I travel so much. The only place I catch up is on the air. You know, on my air, which is kind of cool, and in the air. So that is the only way for me to keep up with it. I mean, honestly, the only thing I fear in the world is internet on planes. (laughs) Right? Dave, I'm telling you, once that happens, I'm dead. I'm gonna retire from email. I don't know, you know, I'm sitting up here and I'm thinking, I'm like, what can I say, what can I do? You know, what I really hope is just for people to be happy. Honestly, we are sitting where the gatekeepers are no longer in control. Guys, I was in my office in the dirty jurors, right? And I started taping Wine Library TV. Now, I'm repped by CAA, the biggest talent age. I mean, they they rep Oprah and Tom Cruise and Beckham and me. That's a joke. I mean, how did they find him? You know, how did I book Conan and Ellen and Front Page Wall Street Journal, Time Magazine? All of them without an agent, without a PR person. If you're pumping out good shit, people will follow. But if you for a second, a half a second, don't believe in what you're doing, whether it's your personal brand or the product you represent, you need to get out now. Please. Can you guys promise me that? I'll give you like eight bucks each. We only get to play this game one time, one life. And I just really hope that people understand. You know, I'm excited because, for example, Monday I gave a keynote (laughs) in Vegas to all the franchisee owners at Domino's Pizza. Yeah. I told them two things. One, you guys are fucked. (laughs) They are, they're in a franchise. I mean, they can't do anything. Everything I believe in, they can't do. And two, bring back the Noid. That was it. Those are the only two things I told him. Thank you. Why did the new get such a big response? I need to use that more often. All right. My fundamental hope is that people understand that this is business. Really, I do. Way too many people running around town not understanding what we're doing. Two, understand the game is changing. I've turned down 40 television deals. Why? Not because I think I'm a big shot. Mainly, yeah, actually a little bit, but mainly I'm waiting for a bigger opportunity because there's no reason for me to share the equity. My content is mine. The way everything is changing is unbelievable. I mean, everybody's gonna be consuming content everywhere and in different platforms and the people that controlled it, newspaper, television, and radio are no longer in control. And that is a huge factor that people have not totally wrapped their head around. You need to build brand equity. It's about brand equity in yourself, in yourself, because you never know what could happen, right? Lehman Brothers, Angel, anything can happen. We're gonna, this whole space is gonna crash next year. It's gonna be awesome. Huge opportunities, get ready. But if you have brand equity, but if you have brand equity, you will be fine. There is never a bad time when you believe, when you work hard, and when you know what you're doing. But you have to do, this is where it's crucial. You have to do what you love. Because let me tell you something. Doing what I do sucks. 18 hours a day, 78 flights this year already, answering every email, what wine goes with beef? I don't know, dude. Whatever you like, you know? I mean, it gets tough, but if you love it, you will win. I love people. That is a huge advantage for me. Get out there and network. People are the people, people are the people. People are the people that are gonna help you. The only way to succeed now is to be completely transparent, completely. Everything is exposed, everything you do. So your legacy is your ultimate life. It's all you've got. And you can build so much on that. When you have brand equity, anything can happen. I leverage my brand equity to get more exposure for Please Dress Me, the t-shirt search engine. 
It got covered in a lot of places. That was my brand equity. If tomorrow Zucks launches a new social network and there's beta, you want in. Don't lie. That's brand equity. You gotta think about that. Plus, what's very imperative to me right now is using the tools. Way too many people are trying to figure out which tools should I use? Should I use Twitter? Should I use Pound? Should I use Jaiku? Should, you know, which tools should I use? All of them. Your user base and the people that care about you, you need to connect to them any way you can, everywhere you can, as often as you can. That is essential, that interaction. We're humans, we like, you know, look at reality TV, that's about as real as, pfft, that shit is not real. But we still like it, because it's somewhat real. This other stuff is very real. The place where we play is very real, and it's a massive, massive opportunity. I hope people wrap their head around that, because we are going through a gold rush of branding. In the old days, to become a brand, you needed a lot of mainstream media attention. But now, if you get talked about enough in all these social webs, blogs, you can get there. You can build your brand, your company's brand. But it all starts with that first moment when you look in the mirror. First moment, what do I, shit. What do I, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? I'm so hot on that. So many people will kill it if they do. And I don't care how small your niche is. For example, I'm killing it with wine video, right? You don't want to compete with me. None of you. But, I'm serious. But, (laughs) but, there is an absolute opportunity for somebody to come out with the Pinot Grigio hour. I'm serious. Niches can go crazy. If you love sports, you could do that. Where is Sports Center? I would watch that all day. Two people doing Sports Center every day. There's so many video blog opportunities. It shocks me that there aren't bigger opportunities, bigger people doing it. They're coming, but you have to understand we're in a gold rush. Somebody's gonna get it and you're not gonna have a shot. So if you have a feel, if you wanna do it, I don't wanna hear about this nine to five bullshit. What's that? You quit? (laughs) I quit, nice. Um, I don't wanna hear about this two job, job thing, right? Nine to five, I don't have time. If you want this, if you're miserable or if you don't like it or you wanna do something else and you have a passion somewhere else, work nine to five, spend a couple hours with your family, seven to two in the morning is plenty of time to do damage. But that's it. It's not gonna happen any other way. You're not gonna make stickers and give out swag and everybody's gonna give a shit about your site. I got wristbands. That is the key. (laughs) Patience. There's a site that I'm very fascinated with. I'm in like with you. I think about it all the time actually, randomly. It's a site that I believe should be a killer. Video, you know, gaming is just so on the verge of exploding. The guy, Charles, He's got it, he's got that it factor. He's a little bit of a douchebag, but he's got it, <laughs> right? And he loves being a douchebag. He's a, he is so authentic, I love him for that. He's who he is, and he's hustling, and he's trying, and I'm telling you, if he's patient enough, and if the right moment strikes, that site is gonna be huge, and there's so many sites out there that are obvious to me, and too many people giving up. There's so many people giving up, because they don't believe, and or, and please stop doing this, by the way, while I'm at it. Don't come out and say, well, we're the Facebook plus Dig minus Flickr and Delicious on the flip side. That's horseshit. Do what you're about. Please. I'm done. (laughs) And I'm done because I want, you know, Jason Fried is awesome. Did you guys like Jason Fried? Clap it up. And he's a heartthrob a little bit, right? He's a little heartthrob. Him and I have really been talking about do, doing this Q&A tour, so we're putting the final touches. We're just gonna sit and answer questions for 12 hours a day. That's why he did Q&A. That's why I've got a buck 27 to answer questions. Please raise your hand and ask a question. I will give you money. <laughs> Anybody? Yes. What are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> What'd he say? Here. Uh, tomorrow, I do, yes, I, I like how you're trying to plug our event. Yes, I'm doing a tasting tomorrow. Go ahead. What was it, anything? Money? Yes, thank you. How do you get money to do what you love? You don't, right? I lost a shitload of money when I started doing what I loved. What you do is you position yourself to succeed. So for example, if you're doing something else and you, and you want to do this thing you love, you do it after hours. You work nine to six, you get home, you kiss the dog, and you go to town. Right? I mean, you start building your equity and your brand and whatever you're trying to accomplish after hours. You, everybody has time. Stop watching fucking Lost. <laughs> That's a good overheard, right? That was a good overheard. 
So, you know what I mean? I mean, if you want this, if you want bling bling, if you want to buy the Jets, if you want to do shit, work. That's how you get it. <laughs> That's all I got. There's just nothing else to say. One more question. One more. It's free. I love you. Thank you.